welcome back to another What's For Dinner video, or welcome if you're new. My name is Veronica, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you three new Crock-Pot recipes that we tried this past week, and they are super easy to make and extremely delicious. And I'm also going to be sharing how I make one of our favorite fall desserts, so stay tuned. Let's get to cooking. This night for dinner, I fixed Mississippi chicken in the Crock-Pot. The first thing that I done was add three pounds of chicken breast to my crock pot. This recipe is very similar to the Mississippi pot roast. It uses all of the same ingredients except for you are using chicken in this recipe and of course in the pot roast I use a chuck roast. After I get all of my chicken added I add a pack of au jus gravy and I just sprinkle that on top of my chicken. And then I sprinkle a pack of ranch salad dressing and recipe mix on top of that. And then I add some pepperoncini peppers to that. You can add as little or as much as you like. And if you would like an extra little kick, you could also add some of the pepperoncini juice on top as well. And then my last ingredient, I add a stick of butter on top. And then I place my lid on my crock pot and I cook it on low between six and eight hours, just until my chicken reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees. And then whenever my chicken was finished cooking, I then just took my little meat chopper gadget tool and shred the chicken. If you don't have one of these tools, you can also shred the chicken using two forks. The chicken is super tender at this point, so it's very easy to shred. And after I get my chicken shredded, I usually just let it set in all of those juices for another 15 minutes or so, just to let that chicken soak all of that up. And it is so, so good. It's so tender and so juicy. I also fix some brown sugar glazed carrots to have as a side. And the way that I do that is I melt six tablespoons of butter in a small saucepan and I add about a half a cup of brown sugar and then I just stir the butter and brown sugar together. And then I add in two cans of drained carrots and then I just stir all of that together. And then I let that come to a bowl and I boil it for a few minutes just until that glaze can form on the carrots. And these carrots are so delicious and they are very easy to make as you can see. And here's my plate. I also fixed some mashed potatoes and some Rhodes Dinner yeast rolls to have as a side. This is one of my family's favorite meals and it's so easy to make. And not only is that chicken delicious by itself, but it's also really good mixed in with some mashed potatoes. Next up, we have crock pot chicken enchilada casserole. I started out by placing one and a half pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast into my crock pot. I then poured a 28 ounce can of red enchilada sauce over my chicken. I then placed my lid on my crock pot and I let that cook on low for seven hours. When my chicken was finished cooking, I then took my meat chopper and I used that to shred my chicken up. I then cut up 10 yellow corn tortillas into small pieces. I then added my cut up yellow corn tortillas into my crock pot with my other ingredients and then I just gave that a good stir. I then added just a little bit of cheddar cheese into those ingredients and gave that another good stir. I 
I then top my casserole with my remaining cheddar cheese. And then I had sliced up some black olives and I placed that on top of the cheese. I then placed my lid back on my crock pot and I let that cook for an additional 45 minutes on low. And then it's ready to serve. Here's mine in a bowl and I also topped mine with some sour cream and it was delicious. Tonight for dinner, I'm fixing spaghetti in the crock pot. I'm going to start out by browning some ground beef. Here I have two pounds of ground beef. Just gonna use my meat chopper and chop this meat up real fine. Once all of my meat is chopped up, I'm going to add in one small onion that I had diced up. And let that cook in with the hamburger meat. And then I'm just going to let this cook until my ground beef is completely brown. You can also just skip this step and let all of this cook in the crock pot instead of cooking it in a separate pan. But if you do, you're not able to drain the grease off of your ground beef. And I like dra draining the grease off of my ground beef. My ground beef is finished cooking, so I'm just going to take this and drain all of the grease off of it. So I just drained all of the grease off of it, and now I'm going to add in a 45 ounce jar of spaghetti sauce. I'm using the Ragu Chunky Tomato Garlic and Onion Sauce, but you can use your family's favorite spaghetti sauce. And then I'm going to add in a tablespoon of minced garlic. And then I'll just stir all of this together. And then I'm going to move over to my crock pot. And now I'm going to pour about half of my meat mixture in the bottom of my crock pot. Spread that around in there. And then I have a 16 ounce box of half length spaghetti noodles. And the half length is so convenient because it's already broken half and I don't even have to break it in half. And I'm just going to place my noodles on top of my meat. Then I'm gonna pour my remaining meat mixture over top of my noodles. And I'll just spread that around to make sure all of my noodles are covered. And then I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese on top of the meat. and a sprinkle of some dried parsley flakes. Then I'm going to place my lid on my crock pot and I'm going to cook this on low for four hours. And this is what it looks like whenever it's finished cooking. I do want to mention that while this was cooking, I noticed it looked a little bit dry. So I did add an additional 24 ounce jar of spaghetti sauce to this and it made a huge difference. It was wonderful. This was my first time making this and I just came up with my own recipe. So I will top this out in the description box below if you would like to check that out. And I also fixed some great value Texas cheese toast to have as a side. And here is my plate. I loved being able to fix spaghetti in the crock pot because it's super convenient. So this may be my new method of cooking spaghetti.
Now I am making one of our favorite fall desserts, caramel apple dump cake. I start off by adding two 20 ounce cans of apple pie filling to a bowl. This is one of our favorite fall desserts and it's super easy to make and it doesn't take a lot of ingredients. After I get both of my cans of apple pie filling added to my bowl, I then add a fourth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. and two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. And then I just mix all of those ingredients together until everything is well combined. I then spray a 13 by nine inch baking dish with some Baker's Joy. And then I add all of those apple ingredients into my baking dish and just spread that in there evenly. I actually ended up making two caramel apple dump cakes that day. I made one for our family and after my mom tasted it, she asked me if I would make another one so she could take it to work and share with her coworkers because it is that good. After I get all of my apple ingredients added to my baking dish, I then take an 11 ounce bag of caramel bits and just sprinkle those on top of my apples. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite fall dessert is. I have several new fall dessert recipes saved and I cannot wait to try them all. After I get all of my caramel added, I then take a dry yellow cake mix and I just sprinkle that on top of all of my other ingredients. I then spread my cake mix around just to make sure it's on there evenly and all of my ingredients are covered in the cake mix. I then take two sticks of butter and I cut them up into about a fourth of an inch thick slices and then I place that on top of my dry cake mix. I then place it in the oven that I had preheated to 350 degrees and I bake it for 45 minutes or until it's golden brown. And this is what it looks like whenever it comes out of the oven. This is actually the second one that I made and that's why it's in a different baking dish. but. Oh my gosh, this is so good. And to take this to the next level, add some vanilla ice cream and then it's beyond delicious. That's it for today's video. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.